coming to you live from the Shoe Chick Art Studio in fabulous downtown Las Vegas because when you paint with me, kids in Africa get shoes. If you want to hear or um, more information about that and about me, you can visit my website at the shoechickstore.com and you'll see all kinds of fabulous paintings like the one we're doing today, The Grinch. Isn't this cool? I think he looks kind of funny, but kind of mean, kind of creepy, right? I always thought Dr. Seuss was kind of creepy, but anyway, like the hat, did that just for y'all. Okay, let's get started. Take all the tape and all the lids and all that good stuff off your paints, okay? And that cup that came in your kit, you want to fill it halfway with water. You also want to make sure your easel is standing up on the table. You got your canvas is standing up on the table. You have these easel backs and they're attached to your canvas like flat. You're going to squeeze the sides up and then you're going to push that flat down and secure it into place. And then your canvas will stand up on your table. Um, or you can lay it flat if you if you want to do that, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do, I this is how it works. I take you about 90% through the painting and then you do the rest on your own. This one's pretty easy because it's so green <laughs> and there's only a few colors involved. And I always, you know, I usually say, I don't want any hard lines. I don't want to look like a coloring book. But this one kind of, it's a cartoon. So it looks like a coloring book. So this tutorial probably isn't going to be very long, okay? Don't get frustrated if I'm going too fast. It's a video. Pause me, okay? So the next step we're going to do, you have a reference photo. I don't have a reference photo. I'm going to be looking at the actual painting. And then I'm going to put my Grinch up here like this. You also have an apron in your kit. That apron fully opens up, okay? Um, I have one on here so I can demo that to you, but it's kind of stuck. Anyway, it opens, fully opens up, okay? Throw a little water on your fingertips if you can't get it open. And it goes over your head to protect your clothing from the paint. We are painting with acrylic paints. We always paint with acrylic paints. They wash very easily off your skin, not so easily out of your clothes, not so easily off the carpet. If you get it on your clothes or your carpet, you might want to just wash it right away with water. They are water-based paints, so. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, identify your sponge brush, dunk it in your water, and we're gonna put a light coat of water on our canvas. A little careful not to wash away the trace lines, but you're really not gonna wash them away because they're really hard, like, marker, okay? like permanent marker. So you're not gonna wash it away. We are just priming the canvas like we always do so that it is ready to accept paint, okay? Now we're gonna do things a little differently today. Usually I take that sponge brush and we start painting the background right away. I'm not gonna do that this time. Set your, paint, your sponge brush aside, not in the water, just set it aside. And then I want you to identify your uh, flat tip brush that looks like this. Now. If you put too much water on the canvas, like too much water means it's dripping and stuff like that, just take your blue paper towel and kind of dab it off a little bit, all right? You even want to put a little bit of water on the sides because we're going to paint the entire canvas. That's called wrapping your paint, painting, and then you won't need a frame. You can just hang your masterpiece on the wall. What we're going to do first is we're going to paint everything that's going to be red, okay? So I'm not even going to put water on my brush because I want this red to be pretty... Uh, opaque, so I don't want any light coming through it. So I'm going to go right into my red paint. And the easiest way to teach folks to paint, I think, is to remind them it's kind of like a color, it's kind of like coloring, but you're just using a paintbrush. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to outline, go right on top of the lines that I already provided for you, and then I'm going to paint it in. So I'm going to paint everything that's red in first, okay? Everything that's red. So that would be the hat, right? And that would be the Santa suit, outlining it first. And then painting it in, just like a coloring, like we're coloring, so we're doing it with a paintbrush, okay? I'm not gonna outline the arm because it's already outlined for me. So I'm just going to paint it in, like so, long brush strokes back and forth, try to make it even, not too much paint on my paintbrush, 
it's okay if you go over the black line because you can actually see that marker coming through the red. And we're going to outline everything again when we get done. That's probably the most um, time consuming part of this for sure is that we're going to go over all those black lines again so they stand out. Okay, so I'm doing everything that is red. I'm even go painting right over the trace lines. Okay. Right over them. Because you can still see the trace lines through through that red paint. Outline it with the tip of my paintbrush and then painting it in. Okay, what else is red? The Santa suit, the hat, and those cool shoes. Outline it, small amount of paint on my paintbrush, not too much. Outline it and paint it in. I kind of extended this foot a little bit with a thinner line because, I don't know, I just think it looks cool. Okay. Everything that's red, we paint it. We're probably going to put another coat on later because um, these are acrylic paints and they look bolder, brighter as you build them up. The next color that we're going to use is blue. So, changing colors, we're going to swish our paintbrush around in the water and we're going to wipe it off on that paper towel. And we're going to go into blue because we're going to paint the blue ornament down there. Okay? And all I'm going to do is outline it and paint it in. And guess what the other colors that are left now? Just green. Ah, everything green. So it's such a large area of green. We're going to use the sponge brush for that, okay? So I'm going to rest this brush in my water after you finish painting the ornament there. Okay? I'm going to rest that paintbrush in my water. Then I'm going to go back to my sponge brush. It's wet. I'm going to squeeze it in my paper towel because I don't want it to be wet. I want it to be fairly dry. I'm going to go into my green paint. And I'm going to come as close as to my Grinch as I can, outlining him. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it in all green. I'm just using the tip of this brush. And if you don't like using the tip of that brush, you can still use that flat tip brush. I'm actually going to switch. I'm going to use this flat tip brush. It has blue on it. I swished it around in my water. I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel. And I'm going to use that because there's some tricky spaces in here with that sponge brush. I'm going to outline everything. It's like get really close to that red without smearing it. Okay, I'm working with green. Okay, guess what? His whole face is green. So we're going to paint all that green. Painting in this space here green. Just leaving the white for the furry stuff. Okay, outlining him. Takes a little while. Might want to put me on pause. I don't know. Hope I'm not going too fast. Probably am. But it's okay because you can pause me, right? So this is all green. Basically, uh, there's a lot of green going on in this painting, right? I'm going around the ornament, being careful not to get in the blue. Smeared everywhere. I'm going to outline around the Santa belly. I'm 
around his little fur right there. And then I'm gonna go back to this brush because the reason why you wanna use the sponge brush, cause you get more coverage and there's a lot of area to cover. So I'm even gonna outline this in here because his face is gonna be green. So I've outlined his whole body on this side. Okay, let's start from the beginning. I've outlined his face a little bit. All this is gonna be green. So I'm gonna outline the fur right here because all this is gonna be green, right? I'm going to outline the little cuff on his hand, even though all that's going to be green too. So I'm just giving a good outline here. An outline on the fur because everything under that fur is going to be green. With me? With me? I hope you're with me still. There's a lot of green going on. So outline everything that's going to be green. So we got all these little frilly things that are going to stay white. This is going to stay white. That's going to stay white. That's going to stay white. That's going to stay white. Okay. Sponge brush now. Everything green. The background in green. Let me see if I have any Christmas music here that's not going to get my video tagged. If you're confused, just follow along with me, okay? Let's see. Give me a sec, give me a sec. I had it queued up and it moved on me. Um, yeah, there's one. So we're going to paint the background in green, just like this with the sponge brush, okay? So start working on that. And I'm going to try to find us some holiday music here. Okay, that's something out of Jingle bell. No, get the hole. Now check this out. You're even going to go over his face. Because it's green. Don't worry about the trace lines. They're going to show through. Don't worry about his eyes. We're going to paint them white later. Guess what? All this is green. Don't worry about not seeing the trace lines because you're going to be able to see them, okay? Everything's green. So then we're also going to fill in that side over. Um here. All green, all green, everything's green. Fill in the gaps between his fingers, but guess what? His hand is green. <laughs> so we're going to paint that whole hand green. Just go right over. So basically everything that's not red and that's not white and that is not the ornament, is green. Even this hand right here, we can just paint right over his hand green. And you're probably wondering how this is all going to come together, but I'm telling you, it's all going to come together. Trust me. Trust me. Actually, one time when I painted this painting, I painted the whole thing green, 
And then I painted white and then I went over all and put the other colors in because it was just easier to do it that way. <laughs> but I thought I would try doing it this way. So I'm using a sponge brush for the coverage. So I don't usually paint with sponge brushes. So if you have a big paint brush you want to use, that's the only reason why we're using a sponge brush because we have a large area of green to cover, okay? So usually in the paint kits, I always put a sponge brush and that's what we use to do the background with. All right. Look how fast it's coming together because it's all that green, right? Okay, so I am just about done with all the green. Hopefully you didn't smudge any colors in there. If you did, you can go over it later when it dries. All the green. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to outline. And that's gonna take a little while. Okay, actually, I think I'm gonna save that for last. Because I'm taking you 90% through the painting and you can do that part on your own. Okay, that's like 90%. 90% of it was painted green. All right, so I don't want any white spaces on my green part. So, and I want it to be even. So you might, I mean, you might not want yours even. It's up to you, like an even coat. You can smooth it out with your sponge brush. Um, if you didn't get close to things, if you wanted to get a little closer, you can go back to your flat tip brush and get a little closer on things. Like if you have some white space that you don't particularly care for, you can kind of fill it in with that brush. Get all the white spaces out that aren't supposed to be there. There are no mistakes, right? So maybe you like yours looking a certain way. Maybe you like it to be, um, you don't want it all one solid green color. Now, if you want, you can put another coat on it and kind of smooth it out. You also can kind of smooth the paint out just by putting a little tiny bit of water on your sponge brush and then taking it and kind of rubbing it into the canvas a little bit and kind of evening out those brush strokes that we put in, okay? You can let this dry and put another coat on if you want them to be darker. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is, believe it or not, paint the white. It seems kind of goofy to paint the white, but we want the white to stand out. So I'm swishing my brush around in the water. Even though my water is really funky right now, it doesn't matter. As long as you wipe it off on your blue paper towel. Pretty good, and I dropped my blue paper towel so I can get it. Ugh. Okay, so. Got my blue paper towel. Wipe it off on the blue paper towel. And I want you to paint his eyes white. So you don't have to look at your reference photo. I got a little tiny bit of white on there. And you might lose that trace in his eye, and that's okay. They're just like little V's when we go to put those in. We're also going to put a little bit of white paint on the white. And you're going to curve your brush a little bit along the edges so it looks a little fluffy. Hopefully your red is dry by now. If not, let it dry or maybe fan it a little bit. And in your reference photo, there's, there's also a little blue in where there's white. So that's up to you. You can put a little blue around the edges if you want. So I'm painting all of the white in. And then we're going to, everything else is just outlining it. Can you believe that? It's almost done, just that easily. So I'm painting the white. And if your, if your ornament is dry, only if it's dry, if it's not dry, you can't do this. Mine is dry. If it's not dry, you can fan it or something like that. But I have white on my brush. And if you look at the ornament in your reference photo has some reflection points on it. So it's just like a stroke of white there and another stroke here and a little dot there. But only do it if it's dry, okay? And all of those little reflection points and all those little snow things in the background. Now, 
If you want to put another coat of green on your background, or if you're not happy with the way it looks like me, this painting is not done. This painting needs a lot more work, at least another hour or so into it. Um, so when you're happy with the green background, you're going to put little dots in the background. You have a fine uh, tipped paintbrush. You might have to wiggle the bristles up a little bit. You can use that and put little dots in the background here and there for snow, snowflakes. Okay. And then primarily what we're going to use this brush for is for outlining everything. So I'm putting the dots in first. Only if your background is dry. Do this last. If your background's not dry or if you want to add another coat of green on it, don't do that part yet. Okay. So now I'm using the fine tooth, uh, the fine tip paintbrush. I'm going to swish it around in my water. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline everything. I forgot to do white on his little Santa hat there too. So. Paint in all the white. All right. I get excited when these starts to come together. They kind of went outside of the lines on there, but that's okay. I wanted to look fluffy or idiot. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to outline everything. We're going to start with this face, and I'm using this fine teeth, fine, why can't I say that today? The pointed, the pointed paintbrush. And I am going into my black paint. And I'm just going to start outlining everything. And if you look at your reference photo, you will see that most of the lines aren't really connected. Like when I do the hat, I'm kind of drawing in and making it look curvy. When you get to the eyes, because you we, we painted them white, you're going to have to look at your reference photo. When you look at your reference photo, the pupils in the eyes, they kind of just look like bees. So you're just going to make like little bees in his eyes. And if you don't like the way it turned out, wait for it to dry and then paint white over it and then try it again. All right? His eyes really make it come to life. Okay, so this part's going to take a little while because we want all the black lines to stand out. You're going to go around this entire painting and do all the black trace lines. Some are going to be thicker than others. And it takes a while. So enjoy the music that you're playing and your food that you're eating. And take your time and do those trace lines, okay? I'm going to do it a little bit with you. Let's see if I can find some fun. It's probably not going to be fun, but I'll look for some holiday music here. So you should be doing your trace lines or trying to catch up or something like that. Um, let's see, let's see. I'm going to have to play Jingle Bells in here. Oh, that was Deck the Hall. Good Jingle Bells. That's a fun one to go on. I got so excited I was just going to sit up. That's not good. So you're outlining. So when you book me live for parties, I get to play any kind of music I want, but when I'm doing these videos like this, I have to be careful. Okay. So now I'm outlining. Takes a steady hand. Don't rest your hand on the painting. Just go right over those trace lines. 
and he's going to start to come alive. I'm curving my fabric a little bit around the fur. You're going to have to use your, your talent a little bit there and kind of wing it. Kind of make the fur look a little fluffy. All right. <laughs> so what I need you to do now is to totally take your time, outline all the black lines, okay? And you know what? It's going to take a little while. But... You're supposed to enjoy the experience, right? It is a journey, not a race. Art is relaxing and therapeutic. Take your time, outline your Grinch, and make him look as sinister as you want. <laughs> I think it's pretty easy from this point. I hope you all had fun. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my page. It really, really fills my spirit when you send me pictures of your paintings. I know, uh, you probably had a flyer in your kit, or you probably text me to pick up your kit. And if you did, send me a picture. I want to see how. Get your family together and take a picture with your paintings, and this will be a keepsake forever. Make sure you sign and date your painting, okay? Because this is going to be valuable. You're going to bring it out every year. And maybe you'll paint with me again and keep, get better, keep getting better and better. This is Paint Party 101, okay? This is for beginners. This is just to introduce you to the world of painting. So I hope you have fun with it tonight or today. It's nighttime here now. So I hope you have fun. I hope you paint with me again. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas.